a few weeks ago, we got an email from the people who made this yes. resin curing machine. We made a video about this where we completely bashed them. We accused them of lots of things and we said, <laughs> don't sue us, don't sue us. Disclaimer, these are just our thoughts. And when I got the email from them, I thought like, are we in trouble? Yeah, like are we getting a cease and desist? Are we <laughs> gonna have to take the video down? For some reason, Amazon keeps recommending resin related products to us. And for some reason, my husband keeps buying them. So today we're gonna to be testing two unique mixing devices, a vacuum chamber. That's suspiciously cheap. A whole bunch of like reusable stir sticks and the strangest of all, silicone gloves. <laughs> God, that just seems horrible. <laughs> I don't want to stick my hands in here. No. So the first step of resin pours is usually to put our gloves on. So I guess it's time to put our gloves on. It looks stiff. <laughs> it's so sticky. The thing is, it's so sticky. Maybe it's also because I have really fat hands. <laughs> the also, fingers like, are getting so stretched out. It's like, it's like sealed. Like, because it, it, it made like a You're silicone a seal around my, oh no. I have an idea. I'm just gonna straight up spray Baby talc spray. powder straight into this. Okay. Also, <laughs> get my hands ready. Okay, I'm no longer sticky. This is as ideal of a situation as it can be. Oh, wow. Oh, whoa, oh my gosh. That's so much better. Okay. So I, I like how there's like built-in padding. Like if you fall in the middle of resining and you need to catch yourself. Also there's like, Replacement fingerprints? Yeah. Even though I'm in, yeah. I am squished. I don't know if these one size fits all gloves really fit all. Okay, let me try. As a person with smaller hands, it does not feel good, <laughs> but I can get them in with smaller hands. But here's the thing. Look at all the empty space. I just have these like stiff, <laughs> empty fingertip bulbs at the top. Like I'm, it's like I'm wearing an inflated glove. <laughs> Look at these Ooh, bulbous, like squishies. <laughs> you know, we should we should test getting resin on these to see how easily it comes off and if they would truly be reusable. Okay. You know. <laughs> oh, I farted. Oh my gosh, Caitlin. What? There's replacement nails molded into the glove, but only on the thumb. Oh, that's so gross and weird. Oh, oh, why? Why? Why did they mold in a replacement thumbnail? Ugh. So far, I'm able to stay dexterous, but it also feels like I'm being consumed by a goo monster. It's mm -hmm. trying to eat my hands. My thumb is going numb. It's going numb? My thumb is going numb because it's so compressed. Oh my God, it looks so disgusting with all the powder in there. It looks so nasty. Your, thing, your, fi your fingers. <laughs> your, <laughs> my fingers. Your, your fingers and thumbs are, are kind of fat, but they're, they're not fat. super long. So the fact yeah. that it's getting compressed lengthwise, I, I feel like that would happen to a lot of people who yeah. might have longer thumbs. Oh, just mixing resin and checking the color and oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh god! Oh, I, I think I see a cat hair. Oh god! <laughs> oh, why did I do that? Like, I, I'm having a really messy resin day, which you know uh, it happens. It happens sometimes. Ah. ah, I'm so messy. Okay, let me just take these off and set them aside so that the resin can cure. And we can reuse these gloves at a later date. <laughs> it's so slippery. It's so slippery. It's like two slippery surfaces. Okay, okay. Hopefully I didn't touch any resin. My hand does feel oh. kind of sticky, but I think it's just the sweat. I don't think I got any resin on my hand. But that, that was a lot harder than taking off just like a typical, you know, glove. Yeah. Oh no, the, my hand is in a mold. Oh no, oh, no. Oh, silly you. Try to wipe it off. Oh no. Oh, it's getting everywhere. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, why does this happen every time? 
every time. If I only had resin on one hand, I'd be able to hook, hook a in. finger. Yep. You're, you're oh, still oh look at that. I got resin on the inside of the gloves. That's the inside. Oh my gosh, look at how hard it is for me to put my hands out. Oh, little oh. sausages. That was a complete fail of removal. I don't know how I got that much resin Whoa. on the inside of my gloves. Like, look how, how, how hard I'm pulling. I know. And like. And also, if you have resin on these, it's gonna, it could like fling it. Oh, already, I have to say, no matter how this turns out, I'm giving it a zero. Yeah, ah, I agree. No matter how this turns out, I'm still curious about how it turns out, but the experience is not enjoyable. The resin is cured, but I'm already having significant doubts that this is worth the time and effort to clean the gloves. Yeah, you'll notice that... Um, there are hundreds, hundreds of individual beads of resin. Yeah. It's like textured now. Yes. And silicone is kind of a little bit clingy in terms of things sticking to it. So you can't just like shake it off. No. You, you have, have to, to kind of like peel each one. Every single one of these off. And I guess you could just oh. go around and be crusty and just hope that your crusty bits don't fall into your next resin pour. Yeah. Oh yeah, try tape. Yeah, tape, yeah. tape, tape. Okay, tape. okay. Okay. Okay, that worked pretty well. Here's the thing though. Yeah. It doesn't matter how well it works. Like picking it off. They were terrible to use. They were terrible to use. They were so terrible to use. I think, and, and even doing the tape, I'm not getting all of it. I need to do multiple pieces of tape for each little segment of glove. It's nope. like shooting off <laughs> resin crumbs as you blew it. Yeah, these are bad. I would rate these a one out of five. No, not even. Zero out of five. Did we pay the power bill this month? What about our subscription to OnlyPans? What about our subscription to Cats Weekly? What about our monthly handbill for the supervisor? What about the subscription service that has a subscription service? Well, I need my monthly subscription. Hi, are you tired of having conversations like this? In a world where even your washing machine requires a subscription, it's easy to forget about that one bill. Like my husband sometimes does. Thankfully, today's sponsor Rocket Money can help. There's a huge interest for tricking you into forgetting your subscriptions, and Rocket Money is there to help you manage them. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform, and it allows you to manage all your subscriptions and payments in one place. You can even set custom budgets. And have them cancel your subscriptions for you with one tap. So you won't have to go through this again. We're sorry, but the subscription you're calling about cannot be canceled unless it's a full moon during the fifth week of the month. Lower your bills, get rid of unwanted subscriptions, and save money by joining the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. So go to rocketmoney.com slash Evan and Caitlin to get started for free. Or unlock even more features with premium, like having a concierge to call and cancel services for you. Alrighty, time to test the AI powered stand mixer. How is it AI powered? It has a button called AI and it's a timer. It's a four minute timer. You press it and it stirs for four minutes and that's it. That's not AI. It has a stand and a little silicone tray. Yeah. Which does, you know, the silicone tray does make me feel a little bit better. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sticky and stuff like that, so it'll yeah. hold position. Yeah. Let's try adding a little bit of colorant to see how it mixes the colorant. Let's add some sparkle for fun. Fun. So we drop this in, press and hold to turn it on. Now did this, did this cup come with it? Um, no, you can use whatever cup as long as it's about the right size. Okay. Let's increase the speed to speed too. Now one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is, you know, we used alcohol ink pigment and it's really sitting on top. What if I change it to high speed mode? I can still really see that alcohol ink sitting on top. Me too. I know what'll help. I'll press the AI button. Oh yeah. Wow. The AI mode has engaged. Now it's smart. It's stealing our job. No! No! <laughs> no! We're useless. That's right. As an AI, I've studied your patterns of do-it-yourselfers. 
and now all your channel are belong to us, the artificial intelligences. It's over, the Evan and Caitlin channel is now the Stand Mixers AI channel. Your podcast and gaming channel and second channel and clips channel and your gaming uncut channel and Evan and Caitlin uncut channel are also mine. It's so over. We need, a, we need to think of a job that can't be replaced. Uh, interpretive dancing. <laughs> no, 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 I need to stop you. I need to stop you. Why are you stopping me? Um, judging robots. That's something that, that robots can't do. The, uh, oh, hi, 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 B-roll camera looking right at my face. Besides the uh, colorant sitting on top, one way I can tell if resin has been mixed or not, if you can see all the way through and it's uniform, that means it's mixed. If you can see these little striations you see right there, then that means it's not mixed. Here, let me, let, let's see if I raise it up a little bit. We'll do a control with the same amount of alcohol ink mixed by hand, and we'll see A, how well is the alcohol ink incorporated, and B, how many bubbles are there in the hand mix versus this one. Raising it up does seem to help some. That does seem to help. So maybe I had it set to the wrong depth. Does you know, the say... AI really should have handled that for you. Yeah, it's actually uh, totally fine in terms of mixing. Now it's also reversing direction, which I think is cool. Now I think that since we uh, did manual for a bit, Oh, hey! The AI has judged it and said that it is done. It is done. Okay, so um, in order to test this against the control, we decided to get some molds, and we thought, why not try a mold we haven't used before? We have some pen molds. So right now we're filling just one mold with resin from our AI mixer, but later we'll fill a mold with resin from the second mixer we're testing, and we'll do a control. More. Oh! Whoa! They always say, learn from your failures, right? Failing is a part of the shared human experience. Well, what if we say we've gotten a degree in failing? From Fail University. Get our new Fail University merch for a limited time on tees, embroidered hoodies, and stickers at shopevanandcaitlin.com. <laughs> okay. Test one done. Let's go ahead and pour the extra into some extra molds we have on standby so we don't waste any resin. Yep. So this next mixer isn't actually meant for resin. It's meant for mixing mm. chemicals. This is a chemistry laboratory oh. mixer and it works by having a motor down there that spins a magnet that matches up with this magnet <clears throat> and ends up spinning this magnet. And you can get different size magnets. This is a small one. This is a medium one. That's so satisfying. And you can get a big magnet. Whoa! So it works, it magnets through the cup? Through the cup. I think let's just do the big magnet, right? Maybe? Yeah. I'll be curious to see, um, does the resin, like, I Release guess you just this wipe, wipe it off really yeah. well? I think I'm gonna try wiping it off, setting it aside on a silicone map, and see if we can reuse it later. All right, I'm gonna add the colors. And one. All right, now I'm gonna drop the magnet in there. Don't splash. Oop, all right. Oh, I'm excited. That's quite a weird vortex forming. Oh, Look at the yeah. alcohol ink like surrounding the bubble on oh, top. Oh, you see, do you, oh, there's, there's a tornado. There's a tornado. Also, it's, it's, it's spinning a lot slower because of the viscosity of the resin. Of the resin. Is that full speed? That's full speed. It's not nearly as impressive. Yeah, it's pretty dang slow. Well, I mean, this is, like you said, it's not meant for resin. Oh, oh pop. it popped. It, it feels like the alcohol ink is sitting on the, the top and the bottom. And the bottom. Should I replace it with the small one instead? We could try a small one. All right, I'll remove this one. Ugh. Wipe that down. All right, I'll try replacing it with the smallest one and see what happens. Oh, yeah. It's spinning so much faster. You know, that makes sense because it's not having to, like the big, bigger pill was like a paddle. You know, it's like a wow. paddle. Wow, wow, look so at that go, having, guys. Oh my like, gosh. It's not having to like push against his- Oh, wow, wow, look, look, look at the side. There's vortexes going on the side. Wow, wow. 
I don't see it. For a second, I was like, is the pill even in there? It's moving so fast. It's moving so fast. This is awesome. I think it's fully, fully mixed. It's fully, fully mixed. Beautifully, very little bubbles. I'm really glad we switched pills. The only doubts I have about this are, um, can you reuse these little tablets? I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I'm gonna get some alcohol. Yeah. And I'll spritz, spritz, spray, spray. Spritz, spritz. Oh yeah. It cleaned very well. So that's it, just hit it with some alcohol. I'm very, very excited about this. Yeah, this one's cool. Very promising for a mixer. Also, just to compare it to the one we did before this, um, we were talking about the need to wipe off the little pill spinners to make them reusable. Yeah. But that is way easier than wiping off the paddle, the drill paddle, on yeah, the last one. I didn't even bother. We didn't even bother. It's gonna build up over time. It's, yeah, it's gonna build up over time and eventually this will become unusable. So that is, that's a factor. Wow. Wow, baby. Wow. Now to do a proper experiment, you need a control. And for us, the control is just gonna be manually stirring with a wooden popsicle stick. The way we normally do. Wow, I have to say I'm just like part way through mixing this by hand and there are way more bubbles. So many more bubbles in here, look at this. It is a lot of bubbles. Now, how much of that is the motion of mixing by hand versus using a wood stir stick? I don't know. That's part of what we're gonna try to find out today. <laughs> There's a bug. Go. mold time. Yes. So we're gonna start with our control. First off, wow. Nice pen. It's like a glass pen. So this was just done by hand with a wooden stir stick. The very obvious defect right away is that massive chunk missing from the front. Yeah, there's a huge void, a huge bubble that was caught in the mold and not released. Now that might be partially our fault. All the little bubbles are the fault of the mixing. So I can already tell though, there's a lot all along the bottom, yeah. all along the bottom of the, um, the, the inkwell. Yeah, so mixing by hand, not the best. Let's see how mixer number one did, the paddle mixer. All right. Okay. Way better. Way better. Instantly, instantly way better. There's still like a, like one bubble right there. There's still some little ones throughout. But this really does go to show that if you mix carefully without introducing bubbles, it's, it's, it's definitely valuable. You get a better result. You do. Still some micro bubbles, but it is better, I think. Okay, let's try mixer number two. This one I feel like might be the best. I think it might be the best. Wow, wow, wow. I, th I do think wow, this one wow, might be the wow. best. Also, I just wanna point out that some of the little shimmers you're seeing in there are the sparkles we added, not the bubbles. We probably yeah. should have not put the sparkles in. Oh no, this, I don't see any, not a single bubble marring the resin on here. I'm kind of sold on this. I'm kind of impressed. Plus, okay, let's do another breakdown. The power mixer that we used. Yeah, there's a, to, oh. it's kind of a pain to clean. It's an intricate shape. Yeah. However, the little magnetic spinny spinny boys. Both of them are perfect. They feel like plastic. There's not a residue. There's not flakes falling off. For mixing a small amount of resin, this depending on like what it can get, do, I am very impressed by this. I would say uh, four out of five, five I out of five. I think five out of five. Five out of five, maybe like a three and a half? Three and a half. So we have some PVC stir sticks right here. And then we have two different types of silicone stir sticks. These are like a rubbery material underneath the silicone. And these are like weighty. These are like metal Whoa. under the silicone. <laughs> and there could be two advantages of using stir sticks like these. One, they don't release an off gas bubbles into the resin that you're stirring up like the wood ones do. Mm -hmm. And these might be easier to reuse perhaps. Because now, you can just pop the resin off. 
We do often reuse our wood ones, but there is a limited life on that. Yeah. Because it doesn't pop off, it just kind of keeps building. <laughs> yeah, it just, it just grows over time. But there's an advantage of that too. With the wooden ones, after the first time you use it, they're fully sealed. So they're no longer off-gassing bubbles. Yeah. Now, will these be better? I don't know. I'll start with this. Ready? Wow. It's stirring. <laughs> it's a stick that's stirring. It's a stick that's stirring. Would you look at that? I think that a lot of the reasons why bubbles are introduced in manual stirring is just because like you're pulling in from the edges and it's pulling bubbles in just by like the way the stir stick enters. So I'm still getting you're still getting a lot of bubbles in there. I'm still getting a lot of bubbles. I was hoping that a lot of bubbles came from... From the wood and not from the stirring by hand motion. It's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> that's, a, that's like as much bubbles as the wood. Look at this. That is a lot of bubbles still. That's a lot of bubbles. Wow. Wow. Do you want to test stirring with one of these just to kind of get a feel for it? Yep. Now, for small containers, I think this would be totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. I think this would be totally fine. Yeah, for a small container? Yeah. It's kind of in between a toothpick and a popsicle stick. Yeah, yeah. Less easy to clean off than the flat, the ones, flat ones because it's kind of a complex curvature. Now, okay. these really fancy rubber and silicone ones. Oh, you know what? I think this has a better squeegee action. Oh, when you, when you're, when there's you're... like a little bit of give compared to the PVC ones. Yeah, this one might be my favorite of them so far. You feel like it scrapes the edges the best? It scrapes the edges the best, but you know, the test is gonna be, does it release the cured resin neatly? Because you have, if you have to like manually clean and pick off every little flake it's of kind resin. kind of a pain when it flakes. And then you don't want that getting in, in your next resin pour, especially if you're going for something really precise, you know? Yeah. Well, I think we'll just have to see how these do. All right. Okay, so let's again, pour it in. Really bubbly. All right. Okay. Let's see how that does. So the results of the silicone and PVC stir sticks. First, I wanna see how easy it is to peel the resin off of these. I don't think it's gonna be easy. I don't think so either. It's kind of shattering. Do you see that? Yeah. And like flaking. Yep. But like you can't, you can bend this a little bit, but not a ton. Yeah, see this is, this is why like silicone tools can be a little frustrating. Sometimes it's just better to use wood or plastic ones and just let it build up. Like this wooden one, it's already ready to use again. Sticking, skipping to the control. Here's the control, which is just a wood stick covered in resin and you just leave the resin on. See, why this is sometimes better is because if you don't get every single resin flake off of one of these reusable ones, it'll get mixed into your next batch of resin. This resin isn't going anywhere, no. so you can just keep reusing it. Now- I think the silicone, I can already call it for both of these. They're gonna both gonna be not great. Yeah, it's- it's a pain to peel off. Can you even peel off for the PVC? That's what I'm, oh yeah. Yeah, it does demold from the PVC. Oh, oh wow. The PVC? PVC is actually a little bit better than the silicone. Wow. But yeah. I think from the usability, Popsicle's winning. Okay, but let's see if these end up with less bubbles in your resin. There's a lot of bubbles in that resin. It very much matches our control from earlier, which was done with the wood stir stick. You know, I think just use wood stir sticks and then just like use use them over again. As much as you can until they're a big, big old glob. Silicone, zero. It's like a one. It's better than the gloves. It's better than the gloves. Silicone, one, one, one and a half. Um, PVC, two. Two. Or one and a half. I'm investigating further. There's a sticky patch on the PVC. To me, that, that reads as uncured resin because the stirring stick is touching part A and part B at the same time, and hopefully the resin gets fully cured, but underneath the, the mixed part, it might be unmixed. So are we just giving them both a zero? <laughs> I, think I, might, I think I might give both a 0.5. Okay. So before we talk about this next product we're gonna be testing, the vacuum chamber, I wanna tell you a story about how I thought we were gonna get sued. 
a few weeks ago, we got an email from the people who made this yes. <laughs> resin curing machine. We made a video about this where we completely bashed them. We accused them of lots of things. And we said, <laughs> don't sue us, don't sue us. Disclaimer, these are just our thoughts. And when I got the email from them, I thought like, are we in trouble? Yeah, like are we getting a cease and desist? Are we gonna <laughs> have to take the video down? Basically, we said that they repackaged a dehydrator and just charged more for it, yeah. which I, I do still stand by. They said this had a big impact on us at the time. However, we acknowledge that we referenced the settings of the dry fruit machine and only tweaked some parameters that were more suitable to resin, which is kind of interesting because that's is. somewhat what we said. And anyways, they were brave enough to say, all right, we'll send you this our new product. And you can just have at it. So that's what we're gonna do. We might be roasting this thing too, but honestly, I'm, I'm really hopeful. I hope that it's great. It has the promise of basically being a vacuum chamber for a lower cost. Yeah, this costs $150. Our own version that we kind of put together with parts. This is like 270 something dollars. And we had to put it together. Yeah, this pump is 270 something dollars. Like in total, it was $555 for this vacuum setup. Now, man, look at these thick walls, sturdy stout. This thing like really pulls a big vacuum really fast. So I'm really so interested because like, look at this. This this weighs, how much does this weigh? 50 pounds. 50 pounds. This thing is heavy. You know, this is probably like. Yeah, but this is where the action is. 15. You know? I know, but I'm saying combined. No, I, I do think that the round, the round dimensions they chose for this was, was smart because it's strong, it's easier to make that sound, structurally sound. And it's very lightweight. But like, this is the pump, this is the motor, and then this is the pump and motor. Yeah. So like, how will it compare? Will it pull strong in a vacuum? I don't know. We'll split that into two cups so that it's the same batch of resin in each. All right, the half goes in here, the expensive pressure chamber, and the half goes into the challenger. Uh, vacuum chamber, not pressure chamber. <laughs> what she said. All right, baby, guess what? This also has an AI mode. Whoa, what does it do? It's a timer. Wow, so AI just needs timer. AI? AI? Oh, AI just changes the timer. From five minutes to nine minutes? Uh, let's give it five minutes. Yeah. Oh, it's going. It's vibrating. Oh. It's Should doing. you get the is other one here? going too? Yeah. You can definitely hear a difference in the motors. All right, this is negative 45 kPa. This one is negative 60. This one is negative 60. This one is negative 80. Negative 71, it's keeping up about so far. All right, we're, we're starting to get some bubbleage in there. Some extra bubbleage, negative 98. And this one's negative 94. But look at the difference, look at the difference, look at the difference. Something, something's wrong in the, in, in, in the readings of this. I feel like the this. gauge is not right, yeah. Yeah, because look at that, that's bubbling. Look at how much that's rising. So much more. Oh, that's rising a ton. Yeah, the, the, I don't think the gauge is this right. Is These bubbling. are not the same KPA. There's a little bubblage on top, like there's a little foam. I mean, it's doing something. It's, it's definitely doing something. But there's already, this is a huge difference. Look at the clarity difference between yeah. the professional versus the imitation. We'll, we'll, we'll give it its time. Well, yeah, we'll give it its time. We'll give it its five minutes. Well, like I would call this over here, the $500 setup at this point. I don't know, it's been like two minutes maybe of boiling. Yeah, that. And it's done. 100% done. And look at the cheap one. It's starting it's to bubble. It's getting clear. It's getting there. It's still the foam on top, but it's getting there. The reason why we bought this expensive vacuum pump and expensive vacuum chamber is because we wanted to use it when we were making the clear wood. We needed to pull like a super intense vacuum. Yes. And that's the main reason why we spent all this money. Also, and I love you, but you do like to future-proof things by buying the most powerful version of them. I did not buy the most powerful. The most powerful within reason. But look at this, the cheap one's doing it. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed. 
You know? It did something. It did. There you go. I mean, it looks pretty good, honestly. Looks pretty good. So here's the one from our more expensive vacuum chamber. Here's the one from the cheaper vacuum chamber. There are still some bubbles on top. Either way, both are a big improvement yeah. from how they were five minutes ago. All right, so I'll put the professional one on this side. Okay. That is beautiful. It's that like is glass. a sight. Yeah, it really is like glass. Mm. Oh my gosh, mm. that's so pretty. Mm. That's, mm. That's, that's pretty. Mm. Now I have to say, holding this, I, I'm, I am starting to feel the heat of curing. Yeah, so if you were curing a larger amount, you know, the more resin you have in your cup, the faster it will start kicking. So yep. if you had a larger amount, it might start kicking and you might be feeling the time pressure here. Yeah, so I that think, is a downside. Yeah, I think that's the downside of the slower vacuum chamber taking five minutes versus two. Yeah. Those minutes are important. Yeah, those minutes matter. But you know, does it do what it says it does on the label? Yeah. Yeah. Let's start with the uh, expensive pressure chamber. This should be the nicest cast yet. It is looking quite nice. It's looking real nice. I am not seeing any bubbles in the resin at all. On the back side, you see some like little flakes of glitter, but I don't know if my eyes can detect any bubbles. I think this one is just about as good as we can get. Without a pressure chamber. Without a pressure chamber. Now, if you want to go a little bit crazy, you can do vacuum chamber and pressure chamber, but... <laughs> Buy, like, a cheap Amazon pressure chamber? That would be scary. <laughs> no, never do <laughs> Don't that. Don't do that. Pressure chambers go bang, bang, explode. Okay, so now you're demolding the cheap vacuum chamber. Yeah, I see sorry. you started before I was filming. I just want to make a note of that to everyone. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty I good. see there's one big one, bubble. There's one bubble I can see with my eye. You know, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. That could have been when I was pouring it, but at the same time, the cheaper pressure chamber did have some bubbles left at the end. It did. And they did pour into the mold. A little bit less perfect, but still like pretty dang good, honestly. It's an improvement. It's an it's, improvement. It, 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 it did what it said it was gonna do. I would give this like a four. Yeah, I'd give it a four. Maybe four and a half, Evil. It is limited because I don't think you should do big pours in this because the resin would start kicking. Yeah, yeah. This, so this small is, pour is a four. I'm a bit suitably impressed. A bit suitably impressed.